Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Cody with Meyer Woodworks and I'm here to give you an update on the modular vacuum tables that I've been working on. So I'm very excited. Um, actually got some traction on these and I'm trying to get this out to the world, I'm trying to get this out to you guys. I fully believe in this technology. All Star CNC has been absolutely phenomenal to work with. And part of this process of me updating my vacuum table and getting this all set up is I want to bring this technology to others. And this is my effort to do that. So I have designed and I'm introducing a modular vacuum kit for the smaller CNC's. So let me tell you a little bit about this. All right, so this we have the plenum. I have tested HDPE and I have now tested the plywood. So let me tell you about some of the shortcomings I've had uh, with the HDP. Unfortunately, even though it was stress relieved material, it cupped and warped and twisted on me uh, severely. Uh, severely to the point that it is so out of flat, unfortunately, it's not gonna be usable going forward. So I reached out to All Star and I stated my issues with the HDPE and uh, Mike actually suggested I use a high quality plywood instead. So he recommended Baltic Birch. Unfortunately, I can't source that. So this is the next best thing. This is a high quality, high ply, I think it's 10 or 11 ply uh, material. But there have been some shortcomings with this as well. So I don't know how well you guys can see this, but unfortunately some of these squares for the support have blown out. And I'm not sure if that is this particular manufacturer of ply, if that is poor glue adhesion or, uh, or what's wrong. So I still need to do some further testing on that. I still need to try some different types of plywood. I also may be testing some phenolic material as well. Uh, downside of that is it is extremely expensive. So for this first round of kits, my goal is to come in and be a cost-effective solution for the small CNC's. So what does this kit include? This kit from me will include the cut plenum, it will include the plenum gasket from All Star CNC, and it will include the tile gasket from CNC, from All Star CNC as well. So let me show you what the tile gasket looks like. This is adhesive backed, and all you need to do is adhere this to your spool board. So the order of operations, what's gonna happen when you receive your kit? You're gonna get the plenum, you're gonna get the plenum gasket, and you're gonna get the tile gasket. So what you're gonna need to do is bolt this plenum down to your frame or screw this down to your existing spool board. Two different schools of thoughts. It'll be totally up to you guys on how you want to affix that. The upside of fixing this directly to the spool board is that it's gonna get you up and running a lot faster and it's gonna be very cost effective. All you're doing is screwing it down. The downside of that is you're going to lose that Z height of approximately one inch. If you decide to embed the plenum like we did on the X-Carve, you may have additional costs associated with extruded aluminum pieces, angle brackets, or you're gonna have to come up with some other system to affix that permanently to your CNC. So after you get the plenum, bolted down or situated on your CNC. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put the plenum gasket in. The plenum gasket has two different heights on it. It's a quarter inch and a little bit more than a quarter inch. I forget the exact number, but I think it's 0.312. So the thicker of the two, which is the 0.312, goes on top, okay? So when you have the gasket in place, it's gonna sit slightly above this surface and that's gonna allow it to compress and seal. After you get that done, the next step 
is going to be to work on your MDF spool board. You can use MDF or you can use LDF, a medium density fiber board or light density fiber board. I would recommend for the smaller CNC's you stick to half of an inch or less than that. The reason why you want half inch or less in my testing, I started with three quarter inch piece of MDF and I barely got enough airflow to hold down a larger part. So by reducing the thickness of the MDF, you are allowing more of that airflow um, to reach the spore board. So theoretically as thin as possible is going to be best. However, depending on how you affix this to your plenum, just keep in mind if you're going to do through bolts or you're going to screw it down, you need to surface it, okay? So, step one on your spool board is going to be to surface the underside. So surface this side, get rid of that top paper material. That's going to open up the MDF, make it porous, and allow that air to come through. What you need to do next is you need to edge band the MDF. You can edge band it, you can use tape, or you can use some other method, but what you're trying to accomplish here is to seal the edges of the MDF to prevent the air leaking out. After you have that done, this gets mounted to the plenum, and you're gonna fly cut the top using your CNC. That needs to be done in place, and that is so your MDF is going to be perfectly coplanar and parallel to your trammed spindle. So it'll be perfectly flat relative to your spindle. The last step is going to be to put on the All-Star CNC tile gasket. It's adhesive back, it's very simple to do. And then after that, you're good to go. So let me talk to you a little bit about what you'll need to do to get this system up and running. There are a few extras. So the first thing and the most important thing is the vacuum source. Now, I didn't come up with this. I borrowed this from Tools Today, but they are using a fine turbo vac on their M1000 system for Stepcraft. So I copied that. I bought the fine turbo vac. And for my research, what I've come to understand is that the fine turbo vac uses an additional air cooler or fan for the motor. And what that means is you're able to use it as a vacuum source and it will not burn up the motor. If you want to use your own shop vac that you already have laying around the shop, keep in mind that when you cap that off and you starve that motor for air, the likelihood is that you're gonna burn up that motor. The fine turbo vac, today's value from tools today, I believe is around $270. And you'll also need some additional plumbing supplies. So let me show you this system in practice. All right, so let me run you through the setup. This is a fine TurboVac 2, uh, but they sell a TurboVac 1. I looked up the specs on the motor. I think it is exactly the same. It's the same wattage, same uh, CFM. I think this is just a physically larger vacuum, and it's about $200 more. So go buy the TurboVac 1, which I think from Tools Today is like $270. That plugs directly into this inch and a half coupler, inch and a half pipe to a 90 degree elbow, and a threaded fitting. Now I did have to chop this down, so you will have to cut that to make sure that it does not come out above this, uh, the height of this material here. So you will have to cut that fitting down, but it's not hard to do. I did it on the table saw. All right, so we're testing the plywood setup. So what I did is I took the spool board off of the HTPE and I put it on the plywood. You can see it's all gasketed. This is not sealed, so you'll You'll hear when I turn the vac on, it's leaking from that fitting there. It's going to be the hissing sound. But this is some initial testing. Uh, this is going to go out to a client in California to test this further. But I think this is going to work really great. I think the 
plywood aesthetically doesn't look the best because of the chip out, but uh, it does not affect the performance. All those little grids do is act as air channels so the air can get all around the entire grid. So this plaque, for example, this is probably realistically the smallest piece you were going to be able to hold on this table, uh, this particular table. This is 24 by 24, this is 28 by 28. So take that in consideration. Our table actually starts about here. So I'll put the part close to the edge and you're gonna have most of this open and you'll see the benefit of the tile gasket and whether or not we can hold this part down. So let me turn the vac on. And give it a firm push. And you can hear that air is leaking from that fitting. But this is absolutely held in place. That is as much force as I can put into it. And it's not going anywhere. And this is close to this edge over here. The center is gonna be even more powerful directly over that port. But I know on my CNC and a lot of you will use um, stop indicators. So let me turn the vac off. And then we can loosen that up. And this is the benefit of the tile gasket, guys. What this does is seals off 85% of the spool board. So it allows you to put a small part like this a single part down in this vacuum and actually vacuum clamp it to the spool board. And you can do your pockets, you can do your profiles, you can do whatever you need to do on this part with just this vac setup. You don't have to worry about sealing off the rest of the spool board as long as you're having significant hold down power. And what you can do if you're finding that you're like, man, it's just parts a little bit too small, it's still sliding just a little bit, you can always go throw on an additional piece of whatever material to help take up these uh, vacuum ports and seal that off. All right, well, I hope that explains everything. I hope I showed everything. If something is unclear, please let me know. Uh, last thing I wanna touch on is the price of these kits. So remember, the kit includes the pre-cut plenum, the plenum gasket, and All-Star CNC a tile gasket. It will also include shipping to the US lower 48 and that price is going to be $349.99. Let me know if you guys have any questions.